if the average arithmetic mean of three distinct integers is 37 and the least integer is 18, which of the following could be the greatest integer? Indicate all such values. I like to review with a fair amount of depth any words that come in uh, to these practice problems as if you're seeing them for the first time. So I will remind you what an average is numerically by giving you an example. Let's think about the average of the four numbers, let's say 10, 15, uh, 20, and 30. We calculate the average by summing up the numbers. Okay, that means we add the numbers together and we divide that total by the number of numbers. I guess that sounds dumb, but it is the number of entries, the number of terms, okay? So the number of numbers. The average of the example I gave comes from doing 10 plus 15, plus 20, plus 30, and then dividing the result by 4. So 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 30 is 75, and we will divide this by 4. And 75 divided by 4 is 18.75. So this 18.75 is a representation of this group of numbers. It's kind of the number that they, that's sort of in the middle of all of them, okay? That's one way of thinking about the average. It's sort of representative of a set in one way. There are a few ways to, there are a few, a few different quantities that you can use to represent a set of numbers, things like the median, okay, the range, the mode. Talk about those in another video, but this one is about the average, and that's how you calculate it. Being familiar with this pattern, the sum of numbers divided by the number of terms, and being able to think algebraically is one of the strongest places to be in for the GRE. So consider this. The average of three distinct in integers is 37, and the least integer is 18. Which of the following could be the greatest integer? What if I said 18 plus another number, let's say m, plus another number, let's say l, divided by 3, the number of terms there are, should be equal to 37 if this is the formula for calculating the average. Okay, so this is a very clever setup that you can do. And why did I use M and L to describe these two numbers? Because I assume they were listed in ascending order. Remember, the least integer is 18, okay? I decided to call this one M for middle number. And I decided to call this one the largest number or the greatest integer, okay? This is the one that we're actually interested in. And being, you know, familiar with algebra, as I want you to be, it has to be the case that solving this expression for L, the number I'm in interested in, will be helpful. So try and stay with me for a little bit in case you're confused. But let's see where this goes, okay? I, I'm basically saying it's got to be helpful to isolate the thing we really want. So how do you do the algebra on this? I will put this 37 over 1 as I can, and I will cross multiply to start simplifying things down. Okay, cross multiplying is usually a thing that people are okay with, with at a lot of different levels of math. 1 times 18 plus m plus l is 18 plus m plus l. And 3 times 37 is 111. Okay, now what can I do? In one step, I could subtract 18 to start getting the numbers together. Now I have this expression m plus l equals uh, 93. And now this is going to seem a little bit crazy, but remember what I said I'd like to do. I'd like to get the thing of interest by itself. And that might involve moving this m, which is not of interest, to the other side. I can subtract the term m from both sides. It would cancel out of this side, but 93 and m are unlike terms. It's not like I can do any math with that. The result of doing 93 minus m is just the expression 93 minus m. Now we gotta play the game really carefully. The largest number that I'm looking for, that could be any one of these, more than one of them it turns out, 
is 93 minus something. Okay, so it's less than 93, right? That's not too helpful. But there's a little bit more to it than that, okay? This middle number has some constraints on it. Remember, the least integer was 18, which means this has to be bigger than 19. Sorry, bigger than 18. Which means one of the possibilities is 19. For instance, if we use 19 for the middle number, then our largest number is 93 minus 19. Okay, so that means that our largest possible number would be 74. 74 is definitely one possibility, but it could not be 77, because we can't subtract anything smaller than 19 from 93. Therefore, we can't get anything bigger than 74. The situation is starting to take shape. It should be clear that there are other options, because there are numbers besides 19 that we can use for the middle number. We can use 20, 21, etc. And one way of solving this problem would be to brute force it. Keep subtracting numbers that are getting successively busy f bigger from 19 and see which options you get. But you can't go too far, okay? Because you can't subtract a bigger number than the result you're going to get, because the result is supposed to be the largest number. You could try that. But just as a clever aside, what I want to show you is another approach to this that maybe starts at the smallest number here. Perhaps a little bit of back solving is in order here. Perhaps a hybrid approach between back solving, plugging in answers, and clever algebra like we've already used. And the reason I say this is because the numbers are in ascending order. Let's start from here and, we, and see if we get a logical result, but we have to be careful with what that logical result is. Remember, these are hypothetical largest numbers. So what if you go to the other extreme? We already know that 74 is the upper limit of the, lar of the largest number. It cannot be 77 for reasons I've already talked about. So where does the lower end begin? What if the largest number is 40? What when would the middle number have been? 40 equals 93 minus what number? Hopefully it doesn't take too much convincing. You can do a light algebraic equation, but you can conclude here that m, the middle number in this case, is 53. But that's a problem because you're saying that the middle number is larger than the largest number. Therefore, 40 could not possibly be the answer. Where does this limit begin, right? Well, what if it was 46? What if the largest number was possibly 46? 93 minus what number would have been 46? Again, hopefully not too much convincing to show you that, in this case, the middle number is 47. But again, this number is bigger than the largest number, which means this can't be true but we're only off by one. So hopefully we're convinced by now that 49 is allowable. And if 49 is allowable and 74 is the upper limit, then 58 would be allowable too. Right, I'll just prove, of course, that 49 is good. What if the result is 49? What if the hypothetical largest number in this list is 49? What number would you have to subtract from 93 to get there? 49 minus 93 would be 44, and this is okay. Again, as long as the middle number is smaller than the greatest number.